Welcome to Move Up with Mike at michaelglass.com. I am Michael Glass. We focus here at our site on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our weekend wrap up of the stock market, we need to start with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trader recommendation. No matter what for investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all your money. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And as always, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical knowledge wrap up for June 25th. We're going to look at the economic calendar of the past week. We're going to look at the price action when we, of uh, the S&P 500. We're going to identify key support and resistance levels for the S&P 500. We're going to look at some of the market leaders like Apple, Google, Netflix. We're going to look at the dollar, the group, the, the dollar, gold, and crude charts for any leading sentiment. And we're going to finish off with the education spotlight at the end. So let's move on to the week that was. Now, I spent the last week down at uh, Disney World, uh, which is why we didn't have a video last week. And so uh, we saw. Uh, the market basically in unchanged for the week. The only positive news uh, to kind of extrapolate from the last time you guys saw was that the Nasdaq was negative, and now we're uh, at least at even at zero percent. Uh, but the market was on a, a a roller coaster, and you might have thought that you were down at Universal Studios with me. Uh, uh, we were all over the place, up and down, big swings, a lot of volatility was in the market. And the main catalyst for that was Greece, the IEA, the FMC, and the GDP. We had multiple tests of the 200 simple moving average on the daily charts this week. So overseas, we had the Greece debt concerns continue to move the market. Um, obviously, there there are a lot of uh, strikes and a lot of petitions and uh, protests going on um, over the austerity cuts. And we're in this chess match, this poker match. Will the uh, European Union and the IMF give them the money? Will they not? And then um, I believe Thursday there was the announcement that Greece was going to get the money. Um, but that certainly uh, blew the market. Um, we had uh, uh, not a lot of uh, corporate news that really moved the market. We're really going to come straight down to some of the economic news. And first we had the IEA which is uh, uh, about 20 or 30 countries, with the uh, United States being 50%, uh, releasing uh, 50 to 60 million barrels uh, from their strategic petroleum reserves, with uh, the U.S. Re obviously releasing the mo majority of that because they're 50%. And that brought the price of oil down, which we'll look at in the uh, when we get to the crude chart. But, of course, is that just a temporary fix? Uh, we'll talk about that. The FOMC, Big Ben, um, acknowledged that the economy has weakened. They said it was temporary, talking about the price of oil, talking about the Japan uh, earthquake. Um, so they believe that the weakened economy is temporary, but they really, uh, there is going to be no more uh, quantitative easing. Uh, so that kind of disappointed the market when he was finally done speaking. And then on Friday, we had GDP uh, at 1.9%, they were expecting 1.8%, but even though the market was up initially, we all know that the market did eventually end lower for Friday. So going into next week, uh, we don't see any key earnings. Uh, at this point, we're going to be getting into third quarter earnings as July comes upon us. Uh, we have uh, Consumer Confidence on Tuesday, Consumer Sentiment on Friday. Those are the two big economic releases that I'll be watching. And, of course, in a week we will have our jobs numbers for June. So let's pull the charts and take a look. Okay, so here we are looking at the daily chart of the S&P 500. And we can really see the uh, 200 moving average being tested here. Uh, throughout the last week and a half or so. Uh, we, when we last got together, we talked about where we closed and that it was likely that we would come down to tw 20 moving average. We've done that. And we can see the 10 and the 20 moving average acting as uh, resistance as we try to come back up. So here we are once again at the 200 moving average. Now, uh, we have support uh, here at 1258, or you can just go ahead and drop it down to 1250 if you want to use the WIC. Uh, for uh, support, 
uh, that's underneath us. So even if we break the 200 moving average, there is going to be some support around 1250. As we look at our indicators, our three musketeers, MACD, oversold, uh, RSI, heading back down towards oversold, and stochastics lagging a little bit behind. As we zoom out to our weekly approach, we can see, let's zoom that out, we can see um, sort of a falling three pattern there. Look at the uh, the inverted hammer here. Uh, we went up and tested the 20 moving average, tested the 10 moving average, failed right there, and now we're coming back down to the 50 moving average in support. So uh, definitely some weakness there on the uh, weekly. All indicators are heading towards uh, oversold, but there's still room to go on the weekly. Uh, on the monthly, one more time, zoom out, and we can see uh, there's the month of June for you. <laughs> nice big old red candle. Uh, testing the 10 moving average. Um, uh, we'll see if that holds up. Maybe we'll come down here to the 20. Uh, that probably, If we do break, uh, that will be my target. Um, our monthlies are all just basically beginning the, the overbought to oversold transition. RSI is heading down, MACD is getting ready to hook down, so Castix hooking hooking down. So um, the monthly is, is is starting to turn into oversold. So the best dual time frame agreement we have here is we've got weekly and monthly basically over, I'm sorry, overbought. So when our daily can get back into that agreement where it's overbought, trying to head back down, then we have dual time agreement. Dual time for agreement, monthly, daily, overbought, looking to be sold, and that's what we're looking for. All right, as we start looking at our industry leaders, first up is Apple. And the one thing to see about Apple is that, you know, I mean, it's not great, but it bottomed out and rallied. Uh, so that is that is good news. Um, we had the close below the 200 moving hours, uh, gap down um, $15. But from this hammer, this low, uh, it has rallied back up to the 20 and the 50 moving average here. So Apple, for me, is going to be neutral. Um, you know, it's entering a zone. Uh, uh, as the market might move lower, uh, it may pull Apple down with it. If the market is moving up, Apple is something I would be interested in. But for right now, I'm going to say Apple is neutral. Um, let's go to Amazon. Here is Amazon, and the thing about Amazon is that it is, uh, you know, I would also say neutral to, to up. Um, uh, we have all these lines, as you can see, that we broke. Uh, we broke out on Tuesday, and we basically have been sitting at resistance of 195 here. Um, as we come to, to market profile, we can see that the point of control is 193, um, and we're basically just below that. So... Uh, if we get above 195 and the market is up, uh, I think this will get us a nice run to the last swing high. Um, uh, so here's another one I would say neutral to up. Interesting. Uh, let's go to Google. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Google, uh, you can see it's bearish. Uh, it's just dropping like it's hot. Um, and it looks like it just broke one key. Uh, area support area on the, on the uh, daily right in here and we've closed below that and so uh, you might find something around 464 here this little gap here uh, so Google definitely weak uh, let's go back to a pointer and we'll go to Goldman Sachs our financial leader and Goldman Sachs, which led the market down, is uh, consolidated for about a month and now is making new lows here. So let's zoom back out one more time and see where we are. I guess this wick, these wick lows here would be where I would suggest we go if we're going. the market is going to continue lower. So we'll zoom up. And that is around 130, support around 130. Uh, next up will be Netflix. 
So that's two sideways to up, two down. Netflix, well, there's an up for us. Uh, Netflix has been on a roll. Um, definitely showing the strength like Apple and Amazon. So our, um, a little bit of uh, resistance right here at 260. Uh, so if we can get above that, we can certainly test the last swing high. So Netflix, I'm going to go with uh, sideways up. So three sideways to up, two down. And our last one is Priceline. And Priceline is, uh, you know, just looking at it globally, I would say sideways. Uh, potentially, where we are right now would be breaking our downtrend line. So there is hope for this. So if we can get above 500, if we can get above the 20 to 50 moving average, get above this, close above this downtrend line, then this would be up. But right now, it is acting as resistance. So I'm going to go sideways. So what that tells me is that we have two. Now, Goldman Sachs being down is key because financials lead us. Um, uh, but the NASDAQ has been leading us lower. And we're seeing Apple, Amazon, Netflix strength there and some of these NASDAQ stocks. So, you know, even though the S&P 500 is sitting at the 200 moving average and showing weakness, um, I would say that there is a potential that the 200 moving average is going to hold and we could bounce here. That doesn't mean we're going to start a multi-day uptrend, but it does mean that we could possibly be in a sideways action for a while. Here we are looking at the dollar. Um, what's important about this dollar is that we're in a wedge, but this downtrend line is really key. And if I scroll out to the weekly, you can see it's all the way back from June of 2010 that we started this downtrend line. Um, and we, we matched it up with uh, January of uh, uh, this year. So very important. And now I'm going to scroll out to the hourly, and you can see that we've been hitting it, but we've never closed above it. But uh, just... On Friday, we finally potentially, and I'm not extending mine out because I want to see what happens before I draw it. Um, we, but it, if you kind of, you know, eye it, it looks like we finally closed above it on Friday, and that's key because we know strong dollar equals weak stock market, and so uh, if we're going to be in a strong up move for the dollar, that could equate with the market moving back. Now we're at a key point. Uh, and what we could be seeing here is not necessarily a lateral up move in a dollar or a down move in the, in the market as much as a sideways action. You know, so we really need to see is this downtrend line going to hold up. Uh, as for gold, we can see that uh, the market, uh, sorry, let me get this back into the daily. Market was in a, a sideways move for about a month. And then on Friday's action, we have broken that. Not only do we break it on Friday, but we also broke the 50 moving average. So next support is at 1475. Our, our beautiful uptrend has been broken. Uh, the 50 moving average has been broken. And so we'll have to see if they're going to find value and bring this back up or if we're going to drop down here to 1475. Now we'll see something similar on oil. Oil was also in a... Uh, consolidation period for about a month and then we broke it but not only ha have we broken it but we broke the 200 moving average now the break of the 200 moving average happened on Thursday with the IEA uh, uh, releasing the 60 bar million barrels um, and what was interesting on Friday is they say oh it's just a short term look it's a short term and we did go lower so potentially this couldn't move us lower um, and maybe it's not going to be short term, and you can kind of see that if we don't uh, get back above the, uh, the 200 moving average, we could head down to 85. But notice that $90 here, two days in a row, $90, buyers found value and pulled the market back up. Because of our chart time, we're not going to have time for our education videos, but you can find plenty of training videos on our site. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We do have our free five-part video course all about high probability training. You sign up and we'll reply back to you and email back with the location of the videos. Uh, we have our mentorship session. Our coaching is truly the way to change your trading results. 
We'll work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you develop a personalized trading plan, match who you are as a trader with your trading style. So our coaching is the way to go. We do have a futures trader we're going to recommend. They, tr they uh, trade all the major future contracts. You can see last week's result was a little over $1,000. And they have a free trial. Our futures broker in today margins lowers three hundred dollars. Twenty free contracts, trades if you sign up through us. And our charting package works on both Macs and PCs. You can have all your custom scans to find the stocks that you're looking for. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter about your system, your indicator, or trading room. If you're not able to pull the trigger in a day, and that's what we do here at Move with Mike, give you the psycho capital to be a focused, disciplined, profitable, and consistent trader. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.